It may be impossible to avoid coming into contact with the flu virus. More than 120,000 Americans have been diagnosed with the virus, and the flu is widespread in 48 states. The risk is expected to stay elevated for weeks. One high-risk area for the spread of the virus could be your workplace. Dr. Tara Narula shows us why offices may be a breeding ground for the flu. Tara, good morning. Good morning, John. With the flu season now at epidemic levels, with up to 4,000 Americans dying weekly, getting the flu is a risk you don't want to take. And we discovered it's not just about who you come in contact with, but what. We generally do about three minutes per swab. Actually, I don't know Three minutes, that's a long time. Yes. Germs, good or bad, hide in plain sight. It could be human cells, animal cells, viruses, fungi, bacteria. Chris Mason, a geneticist at Weill Cornell Medicine, is using a four-step method known as shotgun sequencing. This is basically taking whatever DNA is there and pulling it out and then mapping it all to all the known species. The results will tell us the hot spot areas bacteria and viruses are hiding, including the flu. What are some of the areas in an office where we might be most susceptible? The areas where there's the most flu and microbes are really the high touch surfaces. So things like the kitchen sink, uh, door handles, elevator buttons. And the places you find the most bacteria, that's the same places you find the most viral particles? Right, you'll find bacteria and viruses will come together as a big sort of microbe cloud that follow you around. The CDC says the influenza virus can live on some surfaces for up to a day. Meaning, if you touch a contaminated surface and then touch your mouth, nose, or eyes within that window, you're at risk of infection. And a study found that over a quarter of Americans admit to coming into work sick. So we tested four common office spots to see where the dangers lie. First, the break room. This is an area where people uh, touch a lot, things splash around. Uh, it could even uh, lead to ways, you know, essentially things could grow because it's a moist enough area. Then the conference room. Basically, cells and viruses and other uh, sort of entities can build up in the small porous areas. So things like this, like a chair yeah, in a conference things. room or a sofa or a couch. Fabrics, anything. That's Not really, good. Yeah, it's yeah. basically like a big sponge. And big so, uh, breathing <laughs> area. Yeah. yeah. An easy one to overlook, the stair railing. This is really a place where many, many hands are touching, especially, you know, if people are walking, moving around, they could be when they start coughing. One really good thing, though, is that it is uh, steel, and so the viruses do not live long on steel, neither do most bacteria. And something most of us can't avoid. A keyboard, which I imagine is colonized with a lot of bacteria and viruses. Yes, indeed. How often do you recommend that somebody wipe down a surface? If there's a, you know, active flu going around, it wouldn't be a bad idea to clean it every day. The swabs were taken to their lab for testing and analysis. The results? They did not detect any flu, but found bacteria and other viruses. The keyboard was the most contaminated, followed by the break room, the railing, then the conference room. These findings, they say, are consistent with most offices. Another interesting result. We tested the keyboard after using a disinfecting wipe, and it reduced more than 91% of bacteria and viruses. Wow. Yes. Get your wipes. So another example, <laughs> use Purell, Purell, Purell. Yes. I mean, washing your hands, obviously the best, but sanitizer works well, too. Did you by chance look at this table? I did not. We I thought mean, that might be an interesting yes, ground. I think so, too. <laughs> to be continued. To be continued. Thank you, Tara. Very good advice, Sarah.